You're listening to the Creative Process Podcast. Here you will discover what drives musicians to create music and how they realize an ambition. I'm your host, Jamie Collin, founder of the online independent music magazine, Overblown. Hey everyone, today's guests on the Creative Process Podcast are Italian doom metal power trio, Ufo Mamet. We had a pretty in-depth chat about the symbolism of the number eight, which is the title of their new album, their thoughts on fate, why they love synth so much, if they ever considered releasing albums that just consisted of their synth work. We talked about how their work as graphic artist influences their music, their DIY attitude, working with Steve Von Till and Neurot Recordings. Like, simply put, we just, we just talked about a whole bunch of stuff. But before we get to that, before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of Overblown and the podcast, because without them, none of this would be possible. The new album is called Eight, and the number eight is a lucky number in a lot of different cultures. And in numerology, it is a force that creates and destroys. Does the number eight have any special significance for the band? It all started with the idea that it was a the eight album. So we said, OK, uh, we, we have to find a cool name. Then the things of the number eight that, uh, as you said, is a very peculiar na- uh, number. And uh, it is also the symbol of the infinite and a uh, sort of a uh, robberous uh, without a recording uh, itself and so on. So different significance. And also the idea that um, the title of the album was not a word, but a symbol. So um, in every language, you can pronounce it in, in different ways so for example the, the title in italy is uh, otto in uh, english is uh, eight in uh, french uh, it would be probably wit or something like that so th- this thing was uh, very interesting and very particular we said okay that, that's uh, that's a cool title even if it's uh, easy uh, to say okay it's the hate album so let's call it eight yeah. uh, it, it, it has a uh, a lot of different uh, significance and uh, ideas behind. So uh, the title was good for us. Then if you rotate it, it's the infinite symbol. So we, we can add d- different uh, meanings to, the, to a single symbol. So it's very, it's very interesting at the end. And you mentioned that it also represents infinity. There's eight tracks on the album and they run into each other. It feels like all one piece of music. When we started in writing the new album, we, we started uh, mostly from the, the first song from uh, Babel. And, uh, because uh, it was a song that we had in mind since uh, Ekate period. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started with that, that one. We thought that it was uh, interesting to start from uh, at the end of this song to build uh, the next one and so on. So uh, all, all the songs uh, uh, runs uh, one into the other. It, it was uh, intentional to create this thing. Some of them, uh, um, let's say that you, you cannot listen to them exactly from the beginning, uh, even uh, on the album, because uh, they start uh, into the, the previous uh, uh, into the previous one so uh, this thing the, this continuity this uh, idea of the infinite of the the never stopping thing is, was uh, the idea since the beginning uh, of the album you mentioned uh, the song Babel. Did that have anything to do with the myth of the Tower of Babel? It, it is about the myth of Babel. And uh, the title itself has something to do with that, because, uh, as you know, the Tower of Babel was uh, built uh, and uh, destroyed then by God, uh, and uh, he spread all the humans all around the earth and gave them different languages. And so this thing uh, it comes back with the title, the title that is a number. So in every part of the, the world, it will be different, even if it's uh, just a symbol. So everybody uh, will see it in the same way. We will pronounce it in uh, different ways. Just to say that at the end, we are all the same thing at the end. We love uh, to use symbols and to understand for understanding better the human condition is what uh, is something that put people together in some way and also it's something that divides them. It seems to me that you're interested in the, the universal human experience. Humans are all the same. Then uh, uh, all of us has different ideas and uh, different um, uh, beliefs. beliefs. 
this is what uh, makes us uh, one against the other. Yesterday, for example, I, I was uh, listening to a song that is called God is War, and uh, I, I was thinking about the title, and uh, it's true. It's from uh, All Old Pigs Must Die. And uh, I was thinking, yes, this is uh, th- that is true, because uh, God should be something that makes us uh, all together, but at the end, uh, it's the opposite. So everything that has to do with uh, the idea of uh, uni- universal, of uh, God, or, it's quite difficult to manage. It's easy to, to jump uh, on something that uh, will bring you to something else that is not uh, said by religion of uh, all these ideas of uh, universe uh, of love and uh, it's a big question mark big. yeah of course of course yeah it's probably the biggest <laughs> yeah. the biggest question mark maybe <laughs> probably the biggest one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> another song on the album is called fatum which is latin for face what do you think of the the concept or the idea of face this is something we, we cannot escape i mean and uh, we we cannot control I, I think that personally, everybody of us uh, is uh, building his own fate. From all the choices you do, you you take different paths. Every path uh, will lead to another one and so on till uh, the last one at the end. In some way, I think we control our uh, fatum, like uh, it's in uh, Latin. Mm-hmm. But in a way that we cannot stop it at the end. Uh, li- like uh, this make me, makes me think about Jill Gamish and uh, the the legend of uh, this man trying to find a solution uh, to death to understand how it was possible that everybody was going to dead uh, to die. But at the end, uh, also Jill Gamish. Uh, couldn't stop his faith. faith. We, we try to control it, but it's not possible at all. Most people are always trying to make certain decisions. They feel if I make this decision, my life will improve in this certain way if I make this other decision. But in my experience, I feel that sometimes no matter what decision you make, your life improves and in other ways it gets worse. It's kind of like yeah. uh, no matter what decision you make, it's uh, both good and bad. I, I think that your de- decision will help you thinking that you you are doing something better and everything will change and so on probably it will in in some way but uh, at the end there is not a it's not predictable yeah yeah, there's not a control uh, exact control of uh, doing things it's not like uh, let's say buying a new phone because uh, you will see better on the the screen because it's bigger (laughs) yeah (laughs) It's more it's more a pinball game. Yeah. You can't win. You you can predict where the ball is going, but there's always something that you cannot predict. So it's true. Yeah, it's, your feeling is is what what I feel also. I know as well in the past, and you've talked about your love of synths and uh, effects in your music, and you obviously use those a lot. What do you feel they add to the music? Since the beginning. The name Ufo Mamute has always been, a, a, we always say this, it's a connection between past and future, between technology and, and uh, human parts, let's say, and animal parts. So the use of effects change in some way the, the heaviness of, of the music. They change it in a way that sometimes is not predictable again, because it happens many times that we, 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 we write new material, and then only when we add the synths at the end, we understand better what we are doing. It's a part of our music is uh, since the beginning. It's always been a way of coloring the sound in a different shades. Mm. It gives the music more directions. I mean, when you listen uh, to our songs without the scenes before we, we put them in like for example if you listen to the uh, worship version we publish in the 7 inch it's uh, just a, a demo version before we put the scenes it's different I mean uh, it's uh, quite like it's another song mm. because uh, uh, when you add scenes you can uh, every time you listen to a song, you can uh, understand different, uh, follow different sounds, different uh, effects, and this all these things create new song into the song. So it's let's say that synthesizers and uh, effects are very important to give music uh, a different uh, wide, a different uh, open uh, to the what, what you will listen to. I wonder as well, have you ever considered releasing versions of your albums that are just without any guitars, without any drums, just with the, the synths? No, we, we never thought about 
Oh, no. this thing. But it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it could be interesting also for another reason, because uh, we record the synthesizers, but then uh, we we cannot play them physically on stage. So we use this, uh, we cut all the samples and we play them uh, with the uh, pedal boards to reproduce what we have done uh, in studio. So maybe for one time, it could be very interesting to play them just synthesizers for real. We, we will remember you and we... <laughs> Will I get will I get some royalties or something? Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Talk about an agreement later. <laughs> I know as well that you're a graphic artist with the Malayas Rock Lab. And yeah. for people who when they're listening they might not know what that is, will you explain a little bit about what that is? Malos is uh, the other side of, of the coin for us. Has always been like this because we, we started listening to music and we started drawing pretty at the same time. So they were a two-headed monster because everything is dedicated to do to the to the god of music, let's say, but in different ways. And Malos is the visual side of what we do. Of course, because uh, there are always almost the same people involved. Two of the Ufo Mammoth are two in, in of the Malos. So it should be like this because is what we are, is uh, the air that we breath. We started doing like cover for our band, our previous band. We started doing posters for our first concerts, the demo cover for uh, our first tapes. And then it became uh, our real job, let's say, because we, we use this attitude for other bands, for other musicians. And little by little, the... Maleus things became bigger for us and in the meantime we changed our, our lineup we changed the name of the band and we became uh, Ufo Mammut and we decided also to to become grown up graphic artists with Maleus so they were always connected since the beginning like Poya said we are uh, in Maleus Poya and me are two of the three, and Lou is uh, uh, the mind behind all the visuals for Ufo Mammut for example so Ufo Mammoth and Malus are strictly connected. We have uh, worked to Ufo Mammoth since the to all the graphics of Ufo Mammoth since the beginning. We I think we are very lucky because uh, today we can work with uh, we, we mainly do posters, silk screen posters at uh, Malus, and uh, we work with a lot of bands. We we call it our job, but it's not only a job. It's uh, yeah, yeah, like dream, play. A dream, and, a yeah. dream came came true. So we are lucky guys at the end. So. Do you think your profession as graphic artists, does that affect the kind of music that you write? Well, maybe in some way, because uh, when we think about our music, we also think about its graphic version. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we write music, uh, we think about uh, the, the visuals uh, of the music. So uh, the way we play our music probably is in some way affected by this, uh, the way we represent our music and uh, the way we, let's say, divide it in parts for uh, the, creating also the, the visuals, the videos and uh, all this kind of thing. So in some way, I think that they are strictly connected and also our uh, graphic is probably uh, influenced, influenced by our music too. I think a lot of bands, perhaps many bands don't even think about that aspect until yeah. all the writing and recording is pretty much finished. For, for us, it's very important to have uh, always something that is uh, Ufo Mammoth at the end. We, we, when we have to work on a cover for a, an album, for example, I, I always notice that we are more uh, boring and picky than uh, other artists asking for a cover. I mean, sometimes uh, when you present a, a cover to another band, they say, oh, I like it, cool, very cool. <laughs> Every time we do something for ourselves, it's always, uh, it's always, no, I don't like it. Let's do again. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's try this. No, I don't like it. Let's do it. And so on. But this is good, I think, because, um, I mean, I, I think that Ufo Mammut is uh, one of the few bands that has uh, its own uh, graphic universe mm. uh, today mm -hmm. and uh, a very peculiar one. And uh, e even if every cover is different and so on, it's... Like, like our songs, it's all connected and uh, going from one song to the other, the same uh, The graphic is going from one to the other and so on. Yeah, it, it might be strange to choose someone else to do the graphic for us. I never thought about that, but it should be a strange experience. Okay, 
let's ask to someone else to design the new album. Hmm, it's weird. It's something. It's just giving, just like giving something that belongs to you to someone else, and it's it's different. We always love to take care of, of every aspect of our music. Of course, the music, but also the graphics, but not also the graphics. Also, going around, driving the the, the van, putting the amps on on stage, checking everything all by our, ourselves. It's always been part of the game of playing and producing and, and composing music. It's all the same game, drawings for, for a cover art or for a t-shirt. Yeah, recording the recording album. Recording the album, taking care of mixing process. Yeah. And we are a kind of a do-it-yourself band. Yeah, band. sort of. I was uh, just going to say, it sounds like that's a, a very DIY attitude you have. At the end, yes, we, we like to have control on everything related to our uh, band. When we signed with a, uh, well, we never signed at the end because there, there's not a sign. Yeah, when just we like were contacted uh, by, we shake our hands. Yeah, with Neurot. It was uh, in that period we received other uh, requests from other labels, but... Uh, uh, speaking with uh, Steve, Steve Ontil, and Neurot, it was different because they had our um, a, a very similar vision of music to what we have. So it, it was uh, natural uh, to say, okay, let, let's try. And uh, we we are we've been very lucky because we 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 found ourselves uh, like at home with them. And this is, I think, one of the few times we decided to do something with someone else, uh, except from at the beginning that. It was okay because we were at uh, the first album, for example, and uh, thinking about that now, uh, it was okay, a good experience because uh, it was a new experience, but it was not the, the best choice we, we could do at the end. Yeah, again, choices. Yeah, yeah. Choices. Never and, know. Yes, and, uh, let's say that uh, after these things, uh, we, we started to do everything by ourselves. The most of uh, the things we could do, we we wanted to keep control of them. Yeah, we, we like to think that maybe the choice you make, they help you for the next time. Yeah, yeah. We like to think about this. Yeah, also our agents, we always try to find uh, people that is uh, can become a friend. It's good when you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to deal with people that is only interested in money because music uh, shouldn't be money. Uh, music should be something different. Uh, for example, with Sound of Liberation or uh, with Nanotear and, uh, and the States, uh, they are really great human beings and it's great to work with them. So everything we, all the people we worked with Till now, are uh, very, very cool people, and we, we've been very, very lucky in our choices at the end. After eight albums, do you have any way of trying to prevent your music from becoming uh, repetitive or, or stagnant? Yes. We, when we started, uh, for example, in uh, recording this new album, we thought about uh, a lot of bands that start, they, they start in a way, and uh, the most of the bands at the end uh, become uh, softer, uh, more uh, into, let's say, commercial. And we said, no, we, 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 we should do the opposite thing. We, we should, do, we, we should uh, try to create something heavier than what we did in the past because uh, we, we have to change, try to use our skills, uh, the skills we, we had uh, now compared to the beginning <laughs> that are not so great <laughs> skills, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. we are a little more skilled. Yeah, more. For, for in, in, our, in our standards. Yeah, yes. yeah of course. Yeah. And uh, to, to do something different, create some uh, different uh, riffs, uh, some different uh, drums, uh, parts, and uh, we, we try to do this. And I think that every album we try to improve and not repeat uh, what we did in the past. For example, there are a lot of bands that uh, when they find uh, when they, they find a way, they, they start in doing always the same album mm. for years and years and years. And I think it's boring. Yeah, mainly for the musicians. I mean, I, I, I don't understand how, how you can do always the same the same thing. But I'm speaking from the inside. Maybe also from Amut uh, is doing always the same thing and we don't recognize it. It's just something that we, we, we always try to do is not to get bored by ourselves. It's the main thing. It's, it's the main thing of being crea creative, I think. Is just we want to be surprised by ourselves in some way. We want to be ready for the next album because it's the only thing that makes uh, the band uh, to be a, a, an alive thing. Thank you. 
thanks to Ufa Mamet for appearing on the podcast and thank, thank you for listening, obviously. Um, make sure to check out the show notes in our podcast section at overblown.co.uk. Here you'll find links to everything we mentioned in this episode. Overblown and the Creative Process Podcast are both an entirely DIY venture, so if you enjoy this podcast, you can become a patron of Overblown at patreon.com forward slash overblown. See you down the front.